While the narrative description in your screenplay will always include action and setting, it's also quite common to describe sounds and sometimes necessary to add technical directions or notes. How we write sounds into scripts has changed over time and technical directions aren't super common in spec scripts, so you may have simply never seen them. But we'll be covering all of it here so you can add it to your script with confidence. Rather than writing we hear, you'll want to describe what is heard. That means sound should be incorporated naturally into your description. Evelyn thinks about this, clearly uncomfortable. A buzzer goes off. Evelyn looks up at the security camera to see a customer is waiting downstairs at the counter. At some point, there was an argument over whether sound cues meant to be captured during production should be written differently than sound effects meant to be added in post. Sound cues were supposed to be written like any other description. Reuben packs green vegetables and spices into a blender. He presses his hand down and the blender thrashes loudly. While sound effects were supposed to be all cap to make sure they stood out and were included in the post-production pipeline where the Foley artist or audio mixer would add them. Ruben sets out various spray-painted pieces of original art and a stack of vinyl to sell. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a ringing sound enters Ruben's ears. But whether you all cap sounds honestly isn't much of a concern these days, and I'm not totally convinced it ever really was. You often see even older scripts simply all cap every sound because they either weren't aware of the distinction or didn't care. There's a general sound of kids chatter and laughter. Coming up the sloping path away from the party are Melanie and Mitch. If production needs to all cap something or remove caps from something else to keep track of things, they'll make the necessary changes to the script when they create the production draft. So then what should you do? Well, write whatever works for your story. You can all cap every sound to emphasize them or treat them like normal descriptions so they feel like a part of the environment rather than a main focus. There's also a trend toward reserving all capping for especially important sounds, which is the technique I tend to subscribe to. All capping every noise leaves no room to emphasize sounds that are plot related or help punctuate an action. But emphasizing the sudden blast of a laser gun? With a sudden blast, the slimy alien disappears in a blinding flash of light. Or the unrelenting croaking of a vengeful spirit. And now there's a new sound, moving down the stairs. A familiar throaty croaking sound, along with a strange skittering, like the world's biggest cockroach. Those things can leave a lasting impact. But sometimes the absence of sound can be just as important. Like when we see a character speaking out of earshot. Hi, my name's Dwight Trude, and I would like to buy a purse from you. Or want to stylistically drown out sounds like in Saving Private Ryan. If you're searching for what to write in this situation, you'll likely run across the term MOS. One of the many dubious origin stories goes that for a scene where the audience was meant to see that the characters were speaking, but didn't actually hear the dialogue, the Austrian-born director Eric von Stroheim said in a heavy accent, will shoot this mit out sound. Mit out sound became MOS. Not a sound cue or effect exactly, but a technical direction to shoot something without sound. It might be a fun story, but it's not one you really need to remember because despite looking through scripts going back to the earliest talkies, I've actually never seen a single use of the term. And you probably shouldn't use it either. Technical directions often stand out largely in the wrong ways. Not only are they usually emphasized with all caps, which can take your reader out of their flow, but they're often screenwriting jargon like MOS that reminds the reader of the medium, undermining all the work you put in to completely engross them in your story. All of which means writing in technical directions usually hurts readability for the sake of emphasizing something that hurts readability. If you can replace a technical direction with natural description, you probably should. Instead of describing a character leaning in and speaking MOS, just describe what's actually happening. She leans in and whispers in Tony's ear. But there are some cases where technical directions will be the best option to tell your story. So let's talk about what to do then. Technical directions generally tweak a scene in one way or another. They might change the shots, or subjects, distort an expected sound, or add an overall visual effect. Technical directions are almost always written in all caps. For a blinking moment, we enter bullet time. They can be written in the interior of a paragraph of description, but it's also common to see them begin a paragraph. Close on Frodo, his face fevered and sweating as if in the grip of some terrible internal struggle. He's drawing the ring out of his pocket with trembling hands. They're usually set off by a dash or colon, though it's common to skip the punctuation when the direction refers to a subject. 
You might remember that shots and subjects like these can be written into headings instead. Which approach you take is largely a stylistic choice. Does the small subheading and the white space around it help your pacing? Or would the scene be better conveyed with denser paragraphs of description? Or would you be better off moving this information into the natural flow of the description? The jargon-filled man's POV, a man reaches out and grabs Woody, could easily be replaced with a man's stubby hand reaches down and grabs Woody, which would fit more naturally into the flow of the read while conjuring the same image in the reader's mind. Directing the mind's eye is almost always a more powerful and immersive tool than any technical direction or shot. But if the story is better served by using them, then don't hesitate. We've already seen how effective technical directions for layout can be when we explored split screen sequences a few videos back. The screen splits again from the other side to reveal that with three-way calling, Gretchen was on the line the whole time. And technical directions are one of the most efficient ways to explain broad effects like a scene turning black and white. David and Jennifer glance at one another, then look horrified around the room. The world has turned to black and white. The all cap emphasis ensures this important shift isn't missed in the read. But what if you need an entire scene or sequence to be black and white, or absolutely need to convey something directly to the reader that doesn't fit nicely into the narrative description or scene heading? This is when you'll want to use notes. Note, from here out we're watching an increasingly psychedelic depiction of dimensions colliding, and the Spideys have to do their job as it happens. Notes are usually given their own paragraph, enclosed by parentheses, or brackets, and begin with the very obvious note, usually followed by a dash or colon. I prefer brackets since parentheses are already used for a few other elements, but to each their own. The note format makes it clear that we're on a short aside from the actual storytelling, which helps minimize the impact from pulling our readers out of the flow of things. But remember, just like heading notes, these are meant for our readers alone. If you need the information to be delivered to the audience, then it belongs in the description. While notes cue the reader to pay special attention to something in your script, it's also important you know how to get your audience to take specific note of something within your scene. Like the words scrawled on the back of a photo, text on a computer screen, or a program on TV. Which is why you should check out this video to learn how to write important text and describe in-world screens with narrative description and mini slugs. 